there on Facebook Live because we, I can actually see who's who's communicating, who's watching, and all. And so, it gives me about forty minutes to uh, on our free. And this is a free version of it, so forty minutes, and then we'll all get kicked off. There's Brother Bill getting in. There he is, I'm getting his audio connected now. Yeah, he lay it down. There it is. <laughs> All right, Brother Bill, you Brother should Bill. be good to go. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I feel, I feel <laughs> up in you tonight to have to wait the glass. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to, good to see y'all. Good to be on here tonight. Just uh, remember to uh, pray, pray for our missionaries. I got a... Uh, I'll put it in the prayer group, but Brother uh, Caleb messaged me uh, about a need coming up, their annual trip to before winter missions, and uh, I'll put, the, put all the information in. It's something the church can pray about. Maybe we'll be able to help them out uh, and help them out as he goes up and helps all those pastors up there in Montana. So uh, specifically pray for him, pray for one another, and... Uh, Pray, pray for our church family. Pray for each member. Uh, pray for those that are sick. Continue to pray for Brother Ray that he'll get better. And so, uh, y'all got any special requests real quick? I want to make mention of? Jenna Kate's sick. So pray for Brother Miss Jenna Kate. Yeah, you're you're muted, Vanessa. Yeah, you got your mic muted. Okay. There you go. Now you can... Who we need? Who are you trying to say we need to pray for? Cat. Okay. She may have to be hospitalized. She's bad dehydrated. Oh me. All right. They put her on working all night long shifts, and she's just got really sick. Mm. All right. Let's pray for Cat then. All right. Anybody else? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you, brother Rick. My sister Brenda's been back in the hospital again. I hadn't heard in the last few days how she's doing. Okay. But she, they, she had COVID and we put her in the hospital the other day. Mm. All right. So we'll remember your sister Brenda, Brother Ricky. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, let, let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick, and then we'll get right into our study tonight. Father, we sure love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for our church family. Uh, their faithfulness to to just get involved any way we can, Lord. We know we got some problems at the church there with air conditioning and other stuff. I pray, Father, you'd go before us, work it all out for these requests. Miss Jenna Kate, I ask you, Lord, to touch her. Brenda, Brother Ricky's sister, I ask you, Lord, to touch her and help her. I continue to be with Brother Ray, help him recover, and we thank you, Lord, for. Uh, the, all the unspoken prayer requests within our church family. God, I pray you would meet our needs. God, give us those things we desperately need. Uh, give us a good day this coming Lord's Day. Lord, meet with us in a special way. Save the lost. Reclaim the backslidden. Encourage the discouraged. Help us tonight as we look in your word. May you be honored and glorified through it. And we'll praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute everybody for right now where y'all can just hear me in case y'all got some stuff going on. Y'all won't be, uh, we won't be able to hear that. And then we'll unmute everybody at the end if we got time for some discussion. So we're in Romans chapter number 11 tonight. And uh, verse 25, 26, and 27 is going to be our text uh, tonight. So Romans 11, verse 25, 26. Uh, in 27, and we'll be going to Luke 21 after we read here. So Romans 11, verse 25. says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant of them when I shall take away their sins. And I'll read down verse 28, 
29 and 30. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in time past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded uh, them all in unbelief, for that he might have mercy upon all. So we're very grateful uh, for that. So I'm interested, we've been looking at this phrase, the fullness of the Gentiles. And last last Wednesday night, if you remember, we, we went through it and we wound up in Second Thessalonians chapter number 2 and seemed like history repeating itself. What's happening to Israel now is ultimately seems going to happen to the Gentiles. And so we, we, we went to Luke chapter 21 and that's where we're going to be at. Uh, the remaining of our time this this afternoon in our 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 study tonight, and we're going to look in verse number twenty, Luke chapter twenty one, verse number twenty. It says, and 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 we'll let, give you a few minutes to get there. And when uh, Luke twenty one and verse twenty, it says, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let, let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So, this tells us that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And ultimately, this, the times of the Gentiles is happening now because Jerusalem has been invaded. The Israelites have been run out. They came back in in 1948 at the end of World War II. And so that they've started the process of getting rebuilt and returning back to the nation uh, where the promise of God is. We said, but this is going to happen until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we're still in that time. All right? So look in verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear... And watch this. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So why are people fearful? Why are their hearts failing? Because they're too busy looking at those things which are coming on the earth or are actually happening to the earth. He says, For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and and great, great glory. There he comes, folks. And, uh, I, you know, with, with people's anxiety built up like it is now, people are so fearful. People are terrified. They're watching the news. They're watching social media about events that are happening before our very eyes. This is an imminent return of Christ. He could come now. This is where we are. People are so, never been this fearful as they have been in the day in which you and I are living right now. All right? So look in verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, what does he say? Then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. <laughs> Woo! That's wonderful. When we're seeing all these events, and if and if I had time, we you could go back to 
verse number 8 of Luke 21. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Those are the initial signs. And then he pulls it in that when you see the Jews and the Gentiles sort of dominating the world uh, that we have now, uh, then you know our redemption draweth nigh. And so look up. Uh, don't don't get so caught up in what's bad happening. Things are getting set for Jesus to come again. So look in verse 29. And he spake a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. All right, so he goes not just the fig tree. Matthew and Luke, uh, Matthew and Mark are just going to say fig tree. Saying this is speaking of Israel. But Luke comes in and says and all trees. And the point is, don't get hung up on the fig tree because he says all trees. The instance is when you start seeing it bud and leaves coming forth, then you know summer's coming. In other words, he's tying this into the return of Christ. When you start seeing Israel get back into its nation, get back into its homeland, when you start seeing the favor of God come back on the Jews, we automatically know Jesus is soon coming. And, and they, they went back in 1948, folks. So, verse 30, When they now shoot forth, ye shall uh, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh unto hand. So we're seeing God at work in the Gentiles and as well as the Jews, even as we speak. God is orchestrating things, getting right for Him to come again. Look in verse 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. We won't get into that so much as that. there's a big long debate about that. But look in verse 33. Heaven and earth, shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So he says, you can count on this. This is how it's going to befall. This is how it's going to happen. And then I want you to see in verse 34, 35, and 36, he gives the warning. So he, he foretells the, the, the signs of his coming, verse 8 through 19. He gives us verse 20 through 24, the destruction of Jerusalem. Verses 25 through 28, the second coming of Christ. Verse 29 through 33 gives the parable of the fig tree. And verses 34 through 36, he gives us a warning to watch and pray. And all the gospel, well, the synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all give the same warning. All these, what Luke records, Matthew records it, Mark records it. It's all... One big picture, and each one gives you a little detail. The other one didn't. And we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. So look in verse 34. And take heed to yourself. All right, so now he's given us this take heed warning. Pay attention, be alert. Why? Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged, overwhelmed, weighed down with surfeiting or carousing and drunkenness. And so now he goes on in case you get overtaken in sin in these last days. <laughs> Don't be carousing around. Don't be getting drunk. And here's one where we're pretty good on them two. But the third one, we better, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we better pay attention. Pay attention right here. And cares of this life. Isn't that where we get hung up at? We get worried. We get over. Uh, beside ourselves about things that are happening, things that are happening, the cares of this life get us down. And so what do you do? We're, they're carousing, they're getting drunk, and they're getting overwhelmed by the cares of life. And he says, and so that the day come upon you unawares. So what? don't get preoccupied about what's happening in this world right now because Jesus is coming, friend. Don't let this stuff get you down. Let, let, let the government do what they will. Let the world do what they will. Child of God, keep your eyes on Jesus because today could be the day. This, this simplifies our whole life. 
This simplifies everything. You won't have to worry about going wrong as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. And that's what he tells. So look in verse 35 now. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So in the last days, carousing, drunkenness, and overwhelmed with life, it's going to overcome all the world. What That's verse 35. It's going to be a snare to them. So verse 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always. So watch, and I want you to pray. How am I going to overcome? This is how he tells us. You know, be careful for nothing but by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This is the remedy. If I'm overwhelmed by life, pray. Talk to the one that's in charge. He can change it. Or he can change you, whatever his will is. So pray always. Why? That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. <laughs> That shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Are you, you see that? That you may be counted worthy to escape this. That, yeah. So, that's interesting to me because these things are going to happen and, and by escape, either He's going to take us out or He's going to get us through it. Either way, it goes whether it's by rapture or whether we're going to go through this. That's another day, another message in and of itself. But he says, And all these things shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. So, so here's the end of the thing. You and me is going to stand before God one day. Everybody's going to do that. So we need to watch and pray, look to Jesus to come again. So... Let me say this, that the whole emphasis of God giving us these details ain't that we can figure out when He's coming back because both Matthew and Mark tell us no man knows the day that Jesus is coming back. So that, that's not the issue. The real issue is for you and me to watch and be ready. And so what I want to do now, I want us to go to Mark chapter 13. Let's go to Mark chapter 13. This is... A wonderful stuff. I think we're very familiar with Matthew's account, but I think we overlook Mark's account. And so in, in Mark chapter 13, I'm going to begin reading in verse 14. Because this is almost identical to what Luke is saying, but Mark gives us some a little nugget <laughs> that Luke leaves out. And Matthew leaves out. And I did this as I was reading back over this. So Mark chapter 13, verse 14. It would help if I get out of Matthew. I got to get to Mark. I knew it didn't read right when I was fixing to read it. So verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. So that prophecy that was given to Daniel, this is Daniel chapter 9, all right? Verses 24 through 27. We'll, we'll turn there when we get done reading this because it's important to understand. Look at verse 15. And let him that's on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that's in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. And pray that your flight be not in winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. This is all found in Daniel as well. Verse 20. And except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom He hath chosen, He has shortened the days. So thank God God has favor upon His chosen people that He ain't going to prolong it. He's going to shorten those days of this tribulation. Verse 21, 
And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here's Christ, or lo, here he, he's there, believe them not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce. I love it. If it were possible, even the elect. We're okay. If we're here, we're okay. We're not going to be deceived. So, verse 23, But take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Look in verse 24. But in those days, here it is, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. This is prophecy that's seen in Isaiah as well as in Revelation. Okay? Yeah. Verse 26. Verse 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Now when does He come? After the tribulation. What the text says. Verse 24. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are... Uh, are in heaven, shall be shaken, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And verse 27, And then shall He send His angels and shall gather together His elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So He's gathering. Listen now. Listen to what it says. He's gathering them out of earth and out of all of heaven. This blows my mind thinking about this. So, <laughs> according to Mark, what do you do? Well, you know, so we, we try to stay with the text here. We're going to go to Matthew in just a minute and see what Matthew says about it. And so... If you read on down in Mark, it talks in verse 28 through 31, he talks about the par parable of the fig tree, just as Luke did. But in verse 32, he gives this warning or exhortation to be alert. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son of Man, but the Father. So God the Father is the only one knows when Jesus is coming back. He says, take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch or the doorkeeper to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening midnight, or cock crowing, or in the morning. <laughs> Lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. We don't know when he's coming back. We just need to be looking for him. Be ready when he shows up. That, that's where he gets. So let's look in Matthew 24. And we'll try to... Get this thing to a close. Matthew 24. And I want you to see verse 36. Matthew gives us more details that Luke has it and that Mark has it. Matthew lays for what it's going to be like in days prior to Jesus coming again. And if we think about it and look at it, it, it can't be long. can't be long. So let's look in verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Look at verse 37. Here it is. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What about the days of Noah? Well, he's fixing to tell us some 
Verse 38, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage, until the day that Noah entered it. This is the same language Luke used about carousing and drunkenness. This is what they're doing. They're living it up. I got all the time in the world. Eat, drink, be merry. Until Noah got in the ark. And what happened when Noah got in the ark? God shut the door. And then guess what happened? It started raining. But for 120 years, Noah built the ark and they laughed at him. They scoffed him. It ain't going to rain. It ain't going to happen. Peter tells us in his epistle in 2 Peter chapter 2 that in the last time scoffers are going to come. They're going to say, where's the promise of the Father? Where's He at? Where's Jesus at? That's what they're saying today, friend. Many people have wrote off Jesus coming again. But He's coming. And when He comes, He's not tarrying, friend. He's coming, as Matthew tells us, as lightning across the sky. He's traveling at the speed of light, 187,000 miles per second. That's how fast He's coming. He's coming at the speed of light, man. He's going to be come and gone. Come and gone. So look in verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What does this mean? Jesus is going to show up and it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. And they're going to be destroyed because He's coming in glory and power. Then notice verse 40. Then shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Oh, oh so here now disappearing folks. That's, that's rapture language. But the placement of this is, is interesting. The days of Noah... Setting it up for God coming and getting His people. But notice what it says in verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would, have, would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh-huh. Why did not nobody think? We're so caught up in life, as Luke told us. The cares of life. What's happening around us. We, 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 oh, what, we say this, I wonder what's going to happen next. What could possibly go wrong today? And we're not even concerned with the thought that today Jesus could come. We're too concerned about what's happening on Facebook and Twitter and CNN. And, and, and we're so caught up in all this. And we're missing the enjoyment of knowing today could be the day Jesus comes. So I'm going to uh, get everybody, I'm going to ask all to unmute. I'll just send y'all something where y'all can unmute your mics and we can have a few minutes of discussion before we get kicked off. So, uh, I'll...